Hello, Hardware Thrift here, and today I'm going to be starting my introductory course on LabVIEW. So LabVIEW is known as a data flow programming language. This means that it will have, it's going to be programmed instead of your normal, uh, you type your code in, you run your code, it compiles, and then it spits out whatever program you want. This is going to use a node-based and block-based programming language, so it's a lot more visual than a common programming language that people are used to. Uh, uses for LabVIEW, you see it a lot, lot of the time used in education, but it's mostly an industrial and research-based programming language because it's very good at data acquisition, it's good at manipulating that data, and it's good at storing that data in a way it's very easily read. So this course is going to be more of a beginner course. It's going to be covering different uses for LabVIEW, um, a couple different programming uh, tips, basically like your numerics, how to do booleans, how to make your graphs work, how to, wor how to work and manipulate data, uh, very simple stuff to do in LabVIEW. And then I will also be going into some of the more intricate stuff like taking in data from outside sensors and how to manipulate that and use that to your advantage. So to start, we're going to start by looking at this LabVIEW screen. This is what, when you first log into the program, this is what you're going to see. Just as a heads up, LabVIEW also is not a free program. You do have to buy it if you are going to use it. But as I said before, most of the time it's used for educational purposes or in an industrial setting. So when you first log in, you'll see this home screen. Uh, it'll give you two options. You can create a project or open an existing project. What we're going to do is we're going to go up into the corner, click File, and then we're going to create a new VI. So with the VI, it will give you two different main pages. You're going to have your front panel and your block diagram. So the v way a VI works is a VI is another name for saying virtual instrument because that's basically what LabVIEW is making. So just like any kind of control, control or black box, you'll be looking at a front panel. So your front panel is where all your controls, inputs, and outputs are going to go. So let's say, let's think of it as a calculator. The front panel of your calculator is like all the buttons. So you're going to have your your number buttons, your buttons that work as your addition and things like that. So when you press them, it gives your calculator some kind of input. Your block diagram is what's going to manipulate those inputs. So that's where the data is going to go. It's going to take and manipulate that those inputs, and it'll give you the desired output from there. This will make more sense as we start programming in LabVIEW. So after looking at our front panel and our block diagram, there's a few things you want to know before operating and making your first code in LabVIEW. Uh, so when you go into your view, you can see there's a couple different palettes, and those are where you're going to be drawing your components from so you can actually start programming. The first one we're going to look at is our controls palette. Now this is going to this is going to work with our front panel. So with the controls palette, you'll see you have a couple different options in the modern. The modern is where we're going to be doing most of our work for this introductory course. So if I look into our numeric, we have, we'll pull out a numeric control. What a numeric control is going to do is when I put that down on the screen, you can see we have something on the front panel and we have something on the block diagram. So the front panel is where the user will be able to interact with the actual program. So this numeric control allows me to add numbers to it. So like I just did now, I put a 5 into the numeric control. Another interesting thing about this is it has working buttons on it. So whenever you press these, they will go up or down a value when you press it. So now what's happening is I as a user inputted into that numeric control. And what I'm also going to want to do is put a numeric indicator. So now this indicator will just show a number. You cannot use it to change a number or input a number. It'll just show one. 
Now if we go over to our block diagram, on our block diagram we're going to be looking at a second function that we saw on the view and that's going to be the functions palette which will be used over here in the block diagram. So now in our block diagram we can see we have a numeric indicator. This numeric indicator block will be tied to the numeric indicator over here and this or sorry, numeric control will be tied to the numeric control over here and the numeric indicator will be tied to this numeric indicator on the front panel. So now what's going to be happen what's going to happen is you can tell the difference between these two on the block diagram because you have an arrow outputting from the numeric control. This means the value from that numeric control will act as a value outputting from here and the numeric indicator has an input node. So that means whatever value is inputted into it will show on the numeric indicator. So an easy way to show this is if I take a line, draw it from our numeric control over to our numeric indicator. Now, when you want to run something in LabVIEW, you have a couple options up top. You have a run button and a run continuously button. We're gonna use the run button for most of the most of these courses because most things you will not actually need to run continuously because if you are planning on doing that you can use a for or while loop and it will do that anyways. So we're going to hit the run button and what's going to happen is now after I've run it you'll see that the numeric indicator which I had 13 plugged into is showing a 13 in the numeric indicator. Once again, I flipped those around. I meant numeric control is showing in the numeric indicator. And that's basically how LabVIEW works. You have some kind of input and you're going to an output. And the way those are connected are through a wire. That's part of the reason why it's called a data flow program. Um, because you will be going from input to output and you will be moving in order. These wires here are what will be transferring data. So if I wanted to watch this in real time, I can turn on this little button up here. This, if you look at it, is a highlight. So this will slow it down to see what's actually happening as it transfers through that wire. So you'll see you have the value 13 here, and if I run it again, it travels through that wire to our numeric indicator and shows 13. The last palette I'm going to be going over is the tools palette. So this I don't use very often because I just have it on auto tool, which is what this button is up here. But this is what will help you select different tools for manipulating the program while you use it. Uh, other than that, uh, I really suggest using the automatic tool. It is very, uh, it's very functional and it just saves a lot of time instead of zipping around in the tool panel and clicking on what you need to uh, change around in the program. Other than that, uh, I'll be going over in the next episode, I'll be introducing the numeric in the functions panel and how we can use different blocks in numeric to work as mathematical functions and how using those can change the inputs and outputs of different numeric values we plug in. I hope you found this video uh, informative and if you'd like to stay for the next couple videos please subscribe. Uh, those should be coming out in the next few days. Thank you and I'll see you next time.